Hello. Welcome back to another video guys. Today we're going to be doing the long-awaited coilover sleeve install. This is the cheapest thing you can ever do. I literally have only ever seen it done to Civics. And I've never even heard, I know lots of people probably have heard about this, but I've never heard about this until I got this car. I never even knew coil sleeves existed. I thought you could only get like coil overs. So this is like the maximum cheap way to do this. Today we got DNA motoring, same company that made the exhaust. So hopefully these don't stick a mile and a half out. But we got these from Amazon, and here's a lesson to everybody that's gonna buy car parts. Shop your car parts, because I was on Wish, and these exact same model number and everything, coilovers, were $60, and I was like, okay, 60 bucks is pretty good. I'll order it. Shipping was 70. So I'm like, wow, that's more than the part. So I started shopping around a little bit. They were a little more on eBay, and then on Amazon, it came to $70.65 total. And that's with shipping because on Amazon, they were $70 with free shipping. So always shop your stuff, because just because it seems cheaper on one site, you always gotta go like right to the end and right at the checkout and see what the shipping is, because this this was free. It got here in a week, and the other one I was gonna pay, and it probably wouldn't have come for multiple weeks, and it would have been double the cost. So that's what we're doing today. Let me show you these beautiful, cheap ass things. So these are basically just sleeves that go over the stock struts. They're actually really nice. They look really nice, but, they're also the cheapest thing I've ever ever done to a car I own. There's no adjustability. You can't like adjust dampening, you can't adjust anything because you're just running stock struts. So we're gonna lower it. If it rubs too bad, we'll just get struts on the side. I feel like making a, the world's cheapest strut and coil sleeve combination wouldn't kill the budget build, I don't think so. I say just because of the running theme of doing wish parts, that we just do one. I just noticed my camera's doing that weird little fuzzy thing sometimes again. I have no idea what the hell that is. If you guys know, can you comment? It's like not doing it right now. But sometimes like beside me will go all fuzzy and like kind of colorful. It's really weird. I don't know if it's my lens or what. I might have broke something. But due to the running theme of this car, we should probably just do one. Make sure that the one works, then do four. Because if we rip all these off and take them all apart and then those don't fit, I'm going to just burn the car to the ground. <laughs> so let's just start with this. We'll do this one. We'll do one. Make sure they go. Then we'll do three more. Also, just remembered what I wanted to address at the beginning of this video. You guys are saying that the reds don't match. I know the reds don't match. I told you guys they don't match. I told you why they don't match. But I guess some of you guys probably got amped and just skipped that whole part. So here it is again. Emerson's 240 is this red. My Honda is this red, minus 30 years of sun fading. <laughs> we were gonna just paint over these fender flares so that they don't rust and like the, cause if you just leave it primed, it'll rust eventually. And we didn't want it to rust. So we were just gonna coat it with whatever kind of paint we could find, we had, we could buy. I didn't care if it was yellow. I just didn't want the fenders to rust. But Emerson happened to have some red paint upstairs in the shop from when he did some work on his 240 and it just happened to be pretty damn close. So we used it for the time being Move your booty. We moved it for the, use it for the time being just to cover it and it actually made it look pretty good because it's pretty close. But we didn't try and match it. So, there you go. There you go, mate. We'll put it right here. Yep. Oh, we can't. Wait, wait on that for a second. Sorry. Didn't think about the dirt on the face. Those of you that haven't understood the process, it, you're just, it's just like installing coilovers or anything. You have to take this entire strut assembly out and then, you know, put it all back in. So for now, we just let Emerson go home. <laughs> and, then, and then he can just do his work in his house and then uh, we'll, we'll move on. And he literally slid your magic carpet under the car like Aladdin. Fun fact for you guys, Emerson's actually going to school to like be a technician. So it's when you guys see him working in the videos, it's not like he's being forced to do these. Like he enjoys doing this. This is what he's, he does at work and that's what he's going to school for. So it's not like torture for him. He enjoys it. So for all you guys that like feel bad or whatever, don't. He doesn't deserve it. I'm just kidding, he does deserve it. He also just doesn't let me do it because he thinks I work too slow because I work slow compared to him and he just yells at me. My turn! Look at this. Whoop! Oh, 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 that, well, you know, that's how my life goes. And it still moved both of us. 
<laughs> don't do that at home. Don't do that at home. We have a, a spring compressor, but we've never done it without a spring compressor. So we just wanted to see what would happen because like you always see videos of this stuff exploding. So we, <laughs> we wanted to test it without a compressor and see like how brutal it was. Don't do that at home. That's bad. We'll use a compressor for the next ones, but that was funny. That was pretty good. Look at how much smaller this is. Oh that's, my that's god. Half this, dude, this is it's so gonna be so low. low. Show the people what you just do with the strut. So when he compresses it, look how long. It's it's not like blown, not but good. look it's how slow way. it comes back out. So you, we don't know until we take it off, but now we know that we're gonna need to get new struts eventually because that's on its way out. It's not completely blown because if it was completely blown, it wouldn't. It would just be like it floppy, just, yeah. floppy all over the place. So now, pretty much, you should just be able to take this guy and this will go over it. But this is like super, super floppy. So then you put the spacers, like these gaskets in between these two guys to keep this from flopping around, which is like the bunkest thing I've ever seen. They're packaged upside down. So when they're packaged like this, the numbers are upside down, the way this all sits, but then when you put it on the actual strut, it's supposed to go this way. So when we first assembled it, everything was upside down. So make sure you double check that first. And then we put these in these three holes to like keep it from wiggling at the top. So we just drilled this out. Like it was literally a hair too small. So we drilled this out because Essentially, this fits around this coil. So this is meant for the size of the stock coil, which is a little bit too big. Like this one's a little bit thinner in diameter and that one is meant for a thicker coil. So if you look at it, it'll move around like just a little bit. Whereas this has the fitting for the smaller coil. So we're just gonna put this on is what we're thinking. And then it's got like the tapered edge, which matches the inside of the stock top hat cause it's tapered. And some people just don't put this on. Some people just run the stock top hat and they don't really think about it. This is tapered to fit inside of this. So our idea is just to use both. Yeah, this is our first try doing this. Like we, we looked it up on the internet and nobody seems to use this, but we feel like it'll be a good idea. Pop that guy on, here's the ring. Here's our new one that we drilled out. And then here's this. And then we just put our nutty back. Should be able to just impact all this whole thing back together. Whoa, easy there, cowboy. We literally just made coilovers out of what stock this struts. Center? This is the bunkest, cheapest, but also kind of coolest thing I've ever done. It is a really smart idea. I mean, I don't recommend it if you're trying to get performance, but for the aesthetics of, you know, the old Bondo booty, I think it's gonna be just fine. So right now we have it set to like the, not max height, but we have it set pretty high just to, kind of try and recreate the length of the front spring. It's obviously gonna be shorter, but we don't wanna just go immediately slammed. We wanna start at like 30, and then maybe work our way down and see how low we wanna go. Now that we know what we're doing, we just gotta do three more. <laughs> I come over and you're just in your home. Like just full turtle shell. Hey mate, tuck away back in your shell. <laughs> This is our coil spring compressor. But we kind of had fun doing it last time, so we're just gonna not use it again. So get one, because this is dangerous. I'm not recommending anybody do this. I'm just saying that we had fun doing it, so we're gonna do it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! It went under the drywall! Yeah, it's all dirty, but we got it. These are actually like conveniently located where we don't have to take the whole wheel off to change this height. So we started it, I don't know if you guys can see in there, but we started at 30 and then I just went to the other side and fully sent it to 40 because we were gonna go down by like five, so go to 35. But I figured just dump to 40, see if like if it rubs and if it doesn't rub, then we're Gucci. Yeah, that's a little bit more scent. We just gotta make sure it's not gonna rub because I don't wanna rip these fenders off because we just spent way too much time putting ah! these on. Keep going, hard. I think that's pretty tight. We'll, I we'll think do that it. Looks we'll do it. Just take a test drive. Good. Up and down. Oh yeah, that is actually really nice fitment. It's not like totally slammed on the ground, but I'm not ready for that yet because I don't want to f up these fenders that we just put on and spent too much time doing. And I also want it to still be functional. So like, we're just gonna do the back ones real quick. Nothing's moving. <laughs> Nothing's doing anything. We're literally useless. Like white on rice. Have you wired the needle my fender? Of course, as soon as I turn off the camera, 
we broke the friggin' nut and bolt and everything. This whole thing just snapped. So we, were, we had it, we sprayed penetrating fluid on both sides and then we were like pulling and literally both ends, both just snapped. So now we have the, just the threads stuck in the bushing of the like bottom of the shock assembly and the control arm. So we don't have any like torches or heating or anything to use to heat this up and it's way too late to go buy any. So we were gonna cut it, then we realized that the bushing, it's not a rubber bushing, it's a metal bushing. So we're drilling into it to the point where the actual strut will come off. And then we can focus on just the part that's stuck in the control arm afterwards. I know there's probably a better way and you guys are all gonna bitch about it, but we don't have anything to do a better way. This is our best way right now. With our current situation and what we have at the shop, this is what we have. So Robbie, how are you feeling mentally right now? Like, defeated. I feel like the Civic is winning.